Hello, everybody, and welcome back to some more Tokyo Dark. I'm Ken here from Bearded Gentleman. Welcome to part eight. So, if you guys remember in the last episode, we talked to Mai. And we got told a weird, creepy story about a fucking couple of gods who got together. One died. Dude tried to go to hell to bring her back. Saw what she looked like. And fucking ran away like a fucking asshole. So now we're gonna go with my to fucking go talk to her brother, but station attendant Magira is gonna get in our way. Whoa, whoa, where do you think you're going? Mai and I are leaving. What of it? Oh, well, you can't. I got a call from Mai's grandmother, and she says she's having health issues, so she has to stay. I, uh, I didn't ask what they were. I wouldn't want to be caught fainting on my shift again, but it must be pretty bad if she called. Mai's an adult. Her grandmother can't keep her here. Let's go. No, you don't understand. You're not going anywhere. Um, are you gonna stop me? Use violence. Oh, dear. Well, we're not gonna jump to violence so quickly. Maybe we are. Maybe we ought to go beat up an old lady. I just said, like, I'm not gonna use violence, and yet I just suggested beating up a senior citizen. Go away, no visitors. Bitch. Alright. Oh, okay, you can just fucking hold the button. Episode 8, I'm just figuring out. You can hold the mouse button down on the side of the screen to keep running. Oh, I can't go that way. Dude, I don't want to use violence. Even though I, like, threatened a fat dude. What the fuck is that? That is a dead crow. Dead crow lays in the middle of the street. The small body is in a bad state of decay, covered in dried blood. The maggots have begun eating at its remains. Well, let's pick it up. Ugh, good thing I'm wearing gloves. This better work. Investigation plus 10. Picking up dead birds plus 20. <laughs> hey, Magira, you want to see something cool I found? Check us out, dude. Oh. My God. <laughs> I told you about how I don't like... I, about the blood and... Plus, it's not really my thing, you see. The germs and... The bird's getting closer. You're gonna faint. Yep. Enjoy the dead bird. Investigation plus five. Oh, dear. Did he just faint? Sure looks like it. He'll be fine. Let's get a move on. I agree. So, from here... Are there new places? Well, I can only go to Asakusa, so I guess we're gonna go there. Things seem a little different around here. Inside is the interior of the traditional tea shop. Doesn't look like anybody's been there. Nah, we already bought octopus balls. I'm sure you all remember that. Was the music always this weird here? And I know we talked to these guys. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna skip this because we fucking... We already been through this. Blah, 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 blah. Yes, we're college professors. Hoo-hoo. Let's look at it first. The dojo I was looking for. Very traditional aesthetic. Yep, this is the place. Alright, let's twist your big bro's arm into giving us info. My, what are you doing here? Did she make you come here? It's not like that, Takashi. It was my idea. I asked her to come talk with you. Oh, God, that was horrible. I'm sorry. I asked her to come talk with you, but you sent her away. This woman almost got you killed. You expect me to cooperate with her? Surely, if you need to talk to me, you can come yourself. My sister doesn't need to be involved. I tried that. No, if I came alone, you'd just evade all my questions like you always do. Besides, there's something I need you to see. See what? What are you talking about? 
Yeah, you know what this is, don't you? Where did you get that? Put it away. So you do know what it is. I knew you were hiding something from me. That's not true. I wasn't hiding it. It's not something you ever needed to know about. Besides, why is she carrying it in the first place? Wait, don't change the subject. This isn't about Ito. Mai, I understand that you're upset with me, but we should talk about this another time. Furthermore, that mask has nothing to do with you. You're wrong. Back in April, when Mai was held at knife point by another girl, it was this mask she was after, a mask your family is connected to. Looking for it. But, uh, uh, whatever. Uh, wait, j okay, this is Detective Ito talking. I suppose I've been a fool to think I could keep the truth. Oh, wait, what? That's not Ito talking, that actually is him. Okay, trust the faces. I suppose I've been a fool to think I could keep the truth of our family's past away from you. The past? Does this have to do with mom and dad? Yes, and so much more. I first saw that mask when I was a child, before you were born. The truth is, it belonged to a cult called the Kamen Kai, of which our parents were members. A cult? You're kidding. How'd your parents get mixed up in that? I know how it sounds. I find it hard to believe myself. They were a group led by a guru named Tokimasa, who promised a simpler life away from the hypocrisy and falseness of city life. Our parents both had master's degrees and my mother was on her way to earning a PhD. They chose to give up their lives and their careers to follow some mystic and live on a compound instead. The Kamen Kai were one of many such groups back then. It's true, that was a big thing over in Japan. Well, honestly, you can find fucking cults anywhere, really. I was a child and didn't understand, but thinking about how our parents were deceived and what they put me and my through, it's unforgivable. The mask was on the compound, but for what purpose or what they believed it could do, I don't know. Do you think there are any members of the Kamen Kai left who'd know? No. You see, there are no surviving members. They died. All of them, including our parents. I'm sorry, I don't remember much about it. One night, Grandma came into the room where we were sleeping, saying we had to go. The compound was in the woods, so it was dark and I could barely see, but she kept charging forward with Mai in her arms and dragging me behind. When we were back in Tokyo several days later, Grandma told me that our parents were dead. She didn't seem sad. It was as if she expected it. The government censored much of what happened, so I was never able to learn how they died. Me and Grandma didn't speak of it, ignoring it as if it was my childhood and everything that had happened in those woods was all a bad dream. If it weren't for her, we'd probably be dead with our parents, but ignoring it couldn't erase the anger I felt towards them. I wonder if they even cared what might happen to us. As a high schooler, I spent more time trying to find out about the common Kai than I did studying. I thought that if I could understand why my parents so willingly gave up their lives and abandoned us, I'd stop feeling so betrayed. But I was wrong. Nothing I found gave me any peace. Mom and Dad died as a part of some cult? I... I don't believe it. It's true. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. I guess that in hiding it from you, I was able to hide away my feelings as well. I think for Grandma, it was too painful to talk about. I believe she took possession of the shrine in order to live a simpler life. We had to keep it secret. There's no way we could live a normal life with the stigma of the common Kai attached to us. I suppose keeping that secret hurt us both dearly. For me, pursuing Kendo gave me some measure of control over my life again. But Grandma, who made a choice to leave her only daughter behind, she always seemed to carry the guilt of it with her. She started going out at night, babbling about how she was looking for Mom. When she'd come home, she would have a rotten stink on her clothes. I I was too scared to confront her, so I tipped off the police. They found her wandering in the sewers, holding nothing but the mask. The same one from the cult compound all those years before, and the one you hold now. I was shocked when they gave it to me. 
I hadn't seen it for so long, and all the unpleasant memories from my past came flooding back. That was when I decided to leave Kamakura. It was the only way I could move on with my life. That doesn't account for how the mask ended up with your grandmother in the first place. I don't know how she got it. It seemingly appeared out of thin air. Or maybe someone gave it to her. She never said. I left the mask with her. It always made me uneasy. It had a strange aura about it. Wait, Grandma was looking for Mom? In the sewers? I don't remember any of this. You were in the dorms at your school at the time. Grandma's strange behavior was part of why I insisted on you going to those private schools away from Kamakura. I couldn't drag you into the madness of our past. We parted ways without ever speaking of it, and she was much better by the time you returned to Kamakura. Detective, what exactly is it you're looking for? Surely our family's history isn't of any use to you. I assume you've heard about what happened to my partner. This mask was there again when he died. It's more than an ornament. I need to know where it came from. If that's true, then I want to help. Your partner, he... He seemed like a nice person. No, Mai. You've helped plenty, but I had to do this on my own. Ito is right. I apologize for not telling you all this sooner, but you can't be involved in something so dangerous. I already thought I'd lost you that day at the shrine. I wouldn't forgive myself if something happened to you now. Alright. Thank you for finally telling me the truth, Akachi. I'll head back for now. I hope you remember that I'm your sister. I may not remember the same things you do, but we're still family. I'll see you guys later. Thank you for your help, Mai. You're right, Mai. I'll come visit soon. Looks like she's gone. Mai's not here. There's no need to be coy. No doubt taking possession of that mask has taken its toll on you. Even in the brief time I was in contact with it, I felt an immense darkness behind it. I had such strange dreams and saw things I never would have dreamed up on my own. There was always an unusual air about it that I couldn't stand to be around. Maybe lying to Mai again makes me a hypocrite. All I know is, I don't want her getting hurt. But like you said, I don't believe that mask is simply wood and paint. Oh, I doubt anyone else would believe us. No one ever did, except for one man. On the street, there's an old tea shop. Perhaps you saw it on the way in. Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. An old historian named Yasuhisa is there occasionally. He was the only one who ever acknowledged what I said about the mask is true. If you're looking for information on the mask, he may be the best person to ask. I never pursued the topic with him, but I speak with him occasionally on other topics. His mind is a vault of valuable information. Hopefully he can shed some light on what it really is. I hope so, but please, detective, be careful. Well, at least he was a bit... Well, actually, he was a lot less of a dick this time around. Which is nice. It's actually nice to get a little bit of fucking cooperation every once in a while. Oh, I think that was the tea shop. Yes, it is the tea shop. Welcome, come in. Do sit down. No need to be so formal and stand there like a statue. How can I help you? Are you Yasuhisa? Takashi told me to come and speak with you. Oh? And how is Mr. Kawana? Still prickly as ever, I suppose. I've always found him to be wise beyond his years, though perhaps not by choice. I digress. My apologies. It's the quirks that come with old age, you know. What does Mr. Kawana think I can help you with? I'm looking into a few things related to the Kamakai, the group his family got mixed up in. Ah, more difficult answer than you might expect. You see, there are two groups that share that name. You gotta be fucking kidding me. The first, as you know, is the religious group formed by the Guru Tokamasa. Or Tokimasa. The second is an ancient order, over a thousand years old. What's that you're holding? I was told it's related to the Kamen Kai, or the newer one, and that you could tell me about it. Uh, 
That explains many things, child. A far off look in your eyes, for one. I imagine you have many, many questions. Masks are interesting, are they not? They're meant to be a disguise, and yet a mask cannot lie or contort itself to hide the truth. Ooh, that's deep. In that sense, it is the mask that is more truthful than the human faces we hide underneath them. I wonder how you came to be in possession of an object with such a dark history. I think it might be related to a missing person, but I don't know anything about it beyond that. Ah, but that itself is the essence of history. Layers upon layers of personal connections that are continuously peeled back to their roots. Relics like the one you hold often take unusual routes to where they end up. Relic? It's from the Kamenkai cult from the 90s, and it, I'd hardly call it a relic. Misguided and deceptive as he was, Tokimasa was no fool. In order to gain new followers, he needed to give his cult historical legitimacy. He collected obscure objects and gave them new meanings that he could control in order to manipulate his followers. The mask was what he chose, along with the name of the group that created it. Interesting, isn't it? So Tokimasa was just a goddamn plagiarist. Couldn't even come up with his own bullshit religion. He had to steal somebody else's. What a dick. Yeah, I guess so. I, mean, I guess I was uh, hoping you could tell me some other things about it. For instance? Like why... Now that I'm about to say it out loud, it sounds silly. I'm sorry I bothered you. Don't be silly. You wonder, for example, why holding the mask seems to take you to another place? Or perhaps why you can see visions that don't seem real? Why you feel a strong will exerting itself on you? Oh yes, I know all about those things too. How could you know about that? When Tokimasa was in possession of it, he believed it showed him a path to the realm of the gods. He wrote extensively on the subject. Though unlike most, I don't discount such phenomena as the ravings of a madman when the phenomenon repeats itself. Do you too look into the inky blackness and see familiar shapes in the shadows? Not shadows. I see and hear people who are supposed to be dead. I find things I couldn't possibly have found otherwise. Hmm. Most interesting. Tell me, detective. Oh, apologies. Do you mind if I call you that? I don't remember telling you who I... Er, telling you I was a detective. Huh. My mistake. You must forgive me. A slip of the tongue. I believe it was the way you carried yourself. A determined investigator such as yourself has such a sense of purpose in their mannerisms, you see. And you do seem rather determined to get to the bottom of whatever it is you're chasing. Tell me. Does me telling you that your experiences are not an illusion provide you any level of comfort? I'm not sure, but I do feel something. Maybe hope? It's like I finally got a foothold on solid ground. Ah, yes. Knowledge is a light in dark places, is it not? To think a relic of such import would end up with a detective. You mind if I ask you something? Which do you believe? Are our lives controlled by fate? Pre-measured threads that determine our deeds, our wishes, and our ends the minute we come into existence? Or conversely, is our thread subject to the chaos inherent in our universe instead? Does it change according to our deeds and that which happens to us seemingly by accident? Do you believe it is fate or chance that decides which threads of life are cut short and which are followed? Ooh. That's a big fucking question, dude. But I'm a gambling man. Yes. Yes, of course. Maybe you feel your life has been somewhat out of your control as of late. Control, huh? To be honest, I don't feel like I've had much of that since the mask came to me. You said that the mask was made by the old Kamenkai. Why? Confusing me can't be the purpose it was made for. 
Ah, yes, a more complicated answer than you might have wished for. Indeed, it should come as no surprise that the creation of such a mysterious object is equally enigmatic. Perhaps you could do me a favor. Don't worry. It isn't a relation to this very topic. An important book has gone missing from my shop. If you could retrieve it for me, I feel it could shine a great deal of light on the subject. What kind of book? A book of the missing variety. <laughs> I'm sorry, a jest. It concerns the mask bearer. Mask bearer? Huh, that's uh, that's me, right? Although you carry it, that does not make you its bearer. All will become clear when the book is returned to me. Sounds easy enough. Where can I start looking? Oh, you needn't go far. The man who has it is right outside this building, in fact. As I said, it's not much of an errand, but I, of course, cannot leave my shop. He's right outside? This won't take long. I'll be right back. I get the feeling this is going to take longer than I think it will. Is it the octopus ball man? Does he have the book? Surely he must have the book. Octopus man, give me the book. Ask about tea shop. The old tea shop next door. Isn't that place closed down? Closed? That can't be right. What else do you know about it? Pure conjecture on this one, but I think it might be owned by the kendo instructor from the dojo down the street on account of him being the only one I ever see in there. You might not believe me, but I swear I saw him in there chatting away to himself. Possibly, he's a little nuts. Then again, it might be some super awesome kendo meditation technique. Aw oh, man, why didn't I think of that before? Next time I ought to ask him for some pointers instead of spying on him, eh? Word to the grapevine is that he's a regional champion or something and has trained some of the best. Lots of cops train with him too, so he must be good. Maybe he's not so crazy after all. Speaking of which, I have a bit of a crazy question for you. I know you said it was closed, but do you know anything about a book taken from there? Maybe recently? I was led to believe you would. Oh. I, um, I... Oh, jeez. Go on. Like I said, the place has been empty for years. But, you know, I spent a lot of time outside it. And half the time, the door is wide open. So one day, a few months back, I decided to take a look around. Nothing suspicious. Or nothing. I was just curious is all. <clears throat> Curiosity killed the cat, right? Anyway, it was all dusty and old and there was all sorts of weird stuff laying around. So I might have taken a little souvenir. I mean, it wasn't super old or nothing, so I figured no one would miss it. Besides, it wasn't for me. It's for my kid brother. That guy can get deep in the dumps sometimes, so I try to be on standby for when that happens, you know? So I figured a little gift would cheer him up. Back then he was going through some particularly tough times. His bitch wife, pardon my language miss, had left him and taken their kid daughter with her. He still doesn't talk about it. Like he's in denial or something. Oh, got off track again. I was heading to visit him with the, uh, the ill-gotten book when I get this phone call saying he was in the hospital. He OD'd on expensive sake and sleeping pills. Ooh. Thank God that idiot decided to do it at the bar he owns with the door unlocked. The customer came in and called an ambulance. If it weren't for that, I'm not sure he'd still be here. That's quite the story. Sounds to me like he wanted to be found. Yeah, I think so too. I think he was trying to ask for help in his own way. In any case, I took the book to him while he was in the hospital. I tried to show him that even when he was... At his lowest, there was someone out there trying to do something nice for him, you know? I think it helped. For a minute, anyhow. As soon as the doctors let him leave, he went right back to that toxic little bar. I hope he's okay. He's got issues, but he's my little brother, and I worry about him. He's not been answering my phone calls lately. Originally, my brother's bitch ex-wife, sorry again, had the brilliant idea to put his skills to work in a cheap part of town. Despite that, he's holding on to it with everything he's got. The place is slowly bankrupting him, but he won't let it go. All he has to do is sign some paper and move on, but he can't. Something about it has its claws sank deep into him. 
I've been trying to get him to join me in my business for years. He's a great chef. We could make a killing. Maybe it's not the same as owning a whole bar, but serving passers-by and getting some sunshine is good for the soul. Plus, oh shit. Something about food stands. Sorry about that. Much better than wasting away in Shinjuku, at any rate. I think I've met your brother. Yeah, in a slimy little side street. Anyway, if that book is important to you, he's probably still got it at his place. Want the address? Wait. I knew you looked familiar. Your brother's Daizo, right? Yeah, he does look similar. You know him? Small world. It was probably the smile on my face that threw you off. Tell him his brother Haruto says hi. While you're at it, tell him the takoyaki stands are still the future of cuisine and to get his butt over here. Ha <laughs> ha! I'll do just that. Thanks for all your help. Thanks, Octopus Man. To Shinjuku. Daizo, my boy, I'm coming for you. Uh, this is the one, I believe. Daizo, my dude. Hi, Ayami. How can I help you today? You're a little brother? I thought you were like an older dude. Hey, Daizo, how are things? Oh, hey, you know, same old, same old. Funny thing, I met your brother while I was in Asakusa today. Haruto? You met Haruto? What are the chances? Who knows? It was pretty random. Huh, who'd have thought? So is he still selling takoyaki to stand? Did he say anything? He is. He said to remind you that takoyaki stands are the future of cuisine and that you should go and help him. <laughs> yeah, you talked to Haruto, alright. Always the optimist, that guy. I actually have a favor to ask you. Do you still have the book your brother gave you a few months ago? <laughs> the only thing that guy gives me is headaches. Not sure if I can help you, Ayami. You said he gave it to you when you were in the hospital. Oh, I... what makes you think I was in the hospital? I don't even go to the hospital for checkups. Besides, that dolt's bringing me stuff all the time. Always trying to drag me kicking and screaming over to where the grass is greener. This would have been more recently. After a rough patch. Maybe it was stupid to come and ask. Oh, no, no, it's it's fine. <sighs> that idiot. Always running his mouth. Friggin' traitor. Those are just some hard times. Nothing serious. I just drank a little too much is all. <sighs> I'm I'm sorry, detective, but I don't I don't want to talk about it. Alright, understood. I'm not here to dig up bad memories, Daiso. Thanks. You said you were looking for a book, right? Truth is, I don't remember a book. I do remember Haruto giving me an old magazine, though, back in the hospital. It was one of the ones I used to read when I was younger, when things weren't quite so complicated. Wait there a second. I may have it in the storeroom still. Dang it. Sorry, Ayami. Hold on a sec. Assuming how much junk someone accumulates over the years... Maybe I should throw some of his stuff out, huh? Here it is. It's yours, detective. Hey, that's a familiar looking picture. No wonder I recognize that Frodo you brought by. It's the same girl. An idol named Ruby. Who the hell's Ruby? Reina. No, Ruby, see? It says so right there on the cover. Pretty crazy that it was still in my shop. Guess that means you're still looking for her. Huh. Wonder why we keep running into each other. Weird luck, I guess. Ah, I don't buy it. You're a hell of a detective. You must have a pretty sharp nose. Huh. If you say so, Daiso. Do you mind if I take this? Like I said, it's yours. By the time I started getting rid of some of my old junk. Thank you. See you around, Ayami. Take care, Daiso. Sick. So, with that being complete, I'm going to cut this episode off right here.
So like, favorite, comment, subscribe, and all that good shit. And we're going to dig into more of some of this juicy shit in the next episode. Peace out, my dudes.